Hello everybody, it's Cindy and welcome back to Cindy Lou Loves Glam 2. If you're here, you're here for one thing and one thing only. I got my boxy charm today for the month of February uh, 2020. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited. Uh, but there are a few things that um, I'd like to talk about at the end of the video. Um, but for most of you, you probably just want to see me open the goods. So I will hurry up and do that. But if you want to, feel free to stick around afterwards and gab a little bit with me or listen to me gab, I guess, um, a little bit about some of the things that have been coming out about BoxyCharm. And if you don't want to stick around for that, I totally understand. You just want to see the goods and see what I got. Uh, that's perfectly okay too. Uh, just uh, if you aren't subscribed and you like what you see, please feel free to subscribe, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And also um, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And I will leave those details down below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. Oh shoot, I forgot to weigh this. I'm sorry, I don't see anywhere. If anybody, um, leave it down in the comments if there's like something on the label that tells me what it weighs without me having to go physically weigh it. It is a little bit heftier this month. So I will say that. And bada boo, bada bee. Whoop, oh, mm. huh. I didn't get a card. It didn't go flying out on me when I wasn't looking, did it? There's no card in here. I have no, oh my gosh, this is a first for me. And I'm a little bit annoyed because I'm gonna have to go look up these things apparently. All right, it's okay, not a big deal. Um, I have no idea what this theme is called. I have nothing, I have no idea what the prices are. I can't tally up everything on here. Um, so strike one already, um, but I guess let's move on. Somebody got a little too fast when they were trying to get out the box, I guess. I don't know. I guess it got to me early enough in the month. Okay, um, so I have no idea what the theme is. Don't know what the prices are. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this up because this is my choice. Um, I chose the Becca Ultimate Coverage 24-Hour Foundation. Um, I got it in the shade Linen. I went to a store ahead of time to make sure that I could do a shade match on this. And it was between Linen and I think Cashmere. And Cashmere was the fairest, more cool tone. Linen is the fairest um, neutral. Um, I had a hard time trying to choose between the two, but I think I ultimately decided if cashmere was there, I would have, would have gotten that. Um, I think this will still be a pretty good match and it might even be better. I, now, when I was trying this on in the store, it did not take very much to get some good coverage here. We'll do the back of my scaly psoriasis hand. I don't know if that's psoriasis, but it's definitely dry skin and uh, you can see the full coverage and that's actually not, I mean, obviously your hand and your face skin probably differ just a little bit in tone, but it's not a bad match. We have some, um, Evo Skin Aurora Refreshing Cleansing Hemp Wipes. It's cannabis sativa seed oil, um, it says it's balancing multifunctional anti-fatigue. Um, I don't know if I want to use this on my face. Um, I know it's like probably it's CBD, right? Is that what it is? Well, it's hemp oil. I mean, is that CBD? I'm assuming it is. Um, everybody wants to go and put weed and everything nowadays. <laughs> it says it's natural, vegan, conscious, cruelty-free, Gluten free, paraben free, toxic free, and it's for all skin types. So you get to wash your face off with weed oil. So there we go. Next, I know what these are, but only because I, I don't know if I would have been able to know them if I hadn't 
Um, I, I can't even tell you what variation I have. I don't even know what variation I have. That's what's so frustrating about this. I was excited about the box, now I'm upset. So we have the, which I absolutely love Alamar um, and their brushes especially. So I got the three piece Alamar brush set here. I wanna go ahead and take this out and feel them. I gotta tell y'all, their eye brush set, you, of course we already got a set through BoxyCharm probably been a few years now. Um, I started back in 2018. And I think it was very close to that time. Okay, so this one has like, um, like a texture to it. I don't know what it, I'm assuming it's some sort of foundation brush or um, just some sort of powder brush in general. Um, it's very soft. I think this is an angled contour. Oh wait, it tells you right on the back here. Uh, this is a complexion brush. This is a bronzer brush. I don't know if I'd use that for bronzer, but okay. Um, and this is a brightening brush, which I'm assuming they assume that you either pack it underneath your eyes or use it for um, highlight. So when uh, the second Reina de Caribe came out uh, palette, I did go to the website and I purchased it. And at that point in time, um, they had just released the second Ojitos one. I love that one even more than the one that we got. Um, originally, the one that we got had a green handle to it. This one had a beautiful bright pink to it, and I love using those brushes. And um, on Black Friday, um, had a sale on the Alamar website, and I took the chance and snapped up two more sets of that. So I have um, a whole bunch of the Alamar eye brush set. I reach for those. I, I knew I had to get a second, uh, a second uh, pair uh, or set uh, because those are the brushes that I reach for first out of everything else that I have. Um, they are the soft, softest, uh, fluffiest, um, easiest to work with. I. I don't know, I just really get bummed when they're too dirty for me to use and I have to use something else. Even though I've got Luxie brushes, I've got those Farrah brushes, I've got you know a whole bunch of brushes that I've been given, those are always the ones that I go to. So I'm very excited to get these Alamar brushes and um, you know, goes, they have the orange, uh, this kind of metallic orange or copper color to them that's really pretty. All right, next up. Am I being punked here? Um, I'm starting to wonder why, I'm starting to wonder if there's a reason why they didn't put a card in here. Cause I might be angry if I saw the uh, retail value of all of these. So I got the First Aid Beauty Facial Radiance Pads. Um, says to help exfoliate, tone, and brighten. So I got makeup wipes and more makeup wipes. Uh, let me know if anybody else got this variation and if they're a little bit irritated by this, but um, personally, I don't like paying $25 a month so that I can get two sets of makeup wipes, okay? I've got tons of makeup wipes on my own. Um, I don't know, maybe these are miracle make makeup wipes. I should try them before I complain, but um, I'm not thrilled about this right now. So um, I think we might have taken the high and just kind of trashed it for me. All right, um, and this is another one that I'm, I'm definitely gonna wanna check the uh, box on it to see if there's any funky business going on here. Uh, but we have the Ciate London uh, Everyday Vacay the setting it's the coconut setting powder um i already have a ciate london uh setting powder i doubt that this is going to be that much different from it i got the extraordinary setting powder in fact i got two of them but i ended up giving one away um in with my ipsy a few months ago i guess now i've got another one um i could act like i'm excited to try this except i've gotten to the point where i can't really wear um, setting powders anymore under my eyes because it makes them like incredibly irritated and watery and I don't get how beauty gurus can do that without like crying off all the makeup that they already like spent hours on um 
but I'm assuming this is probably around twenty twenty two dollars because if, if I recall that's what um, Ipsy had priced theirs at um, and then this is also Ciate London so let's see if this was made in China um, or if it was made where it was supposed to okay it's distributed by China says it's cruelty free and vegan isn't Ciate the one who who claims that none of their products have talc in it okay it is made in Taiwan it's not made in PRC but it is made in Taiwan um, folks let me know maybe I'm gonna have to go look it up and do a little bit of research I really don't want to do that because I want to get this video up um, to see if um, that's where Ciate normally distributes uh, their products from to put it all together um, I don't know what the final cost of my box is um, I can't tell you what the cost of these products are I think this might retail in like the $55 range. I don't know. If I had to guess, um, I would say this is about probably 22. So we'll take that up to 70. We'll see. Let's let's see if Cindy wins the price is right on all these um, retail value um, items. I have no idea how much these makeup wipes are, but I'm guessing that they're like maybe five to ten dollars. We'll go ahead and be nice and say maybe it's ten dollars i have no idea how much these are i can tell you the cleanser that i have used from first day beauty i i you know so far my experience with first day beauty beauty is fine oh these are made in usa so we know we didn't you know flub on any of that thing the cleanser that i had was like 20 but i'm guessing they wouldn't dare sell this for 20. um so i'm saying i'm thinking 20 at the most probably closer to 10. um on or maybe closer to 15 so let's let's be let's be nice and say 15 so we were up at 85 this makes us an even 100 and um i'm i love the lmr brushes but i i don't think that they're gonna be much beyond 20. um i'm gonna again i'm gonna have to go look this up and see what's what's up with that but um i i don't think they're beyond 20. Um, in fact, if I had to guess, I mean, the Ojitos brushes are $18 a piece. So I don't know if those are $18 either. I'm assuming that since these are a little bit bigger, there might be a little bit more that goes into um, maybe manufacturing them or um, the, the materials cost for this. So let's say at the most, it's probably $25 for this brush trio. Um, I could be wrong. She could be selling them for a lot more. So I guess we're looking at a box of $125. I'm trying not to complain because I know there's a lot of people out there that can't afford monthly subscription boxes like this. And, and they would be more than happy to get like higher end stuff for such a low price if they could. Um, it's just, I mean, I guess the main thing that I got out of the box, I got to choose. So um, there's that. I am happy to get the Alamar brushes. So, I mean, so far for me, it's a two out of five. I guess I have things that I will use. I don't know if I'm going to use this or not. I mean, I'm certainly not going to use them around my eyes because I've had such problems with that. Um, if I can use it around my eyes, I will. And I will say the Ciate extraordinary powder that i've had is a very very nice pill powder it's very finely milled it looks it does make your face look seamless so i shouldn't be um mad about that it's just it's not a product that i typically use um i'm usually and i usually don't even have time to use a setting powder to be honest with you i have enough time to throw either concealer on most of my face and do a quick um, round that way or um, foundation because I'm spending all of my time on my eye look and then I also got to hurry up and still get out the door to work. So usually baking don't happen in my life um, except for when I have re a really, really long time to get ready, um, then maybe. And if I'm going to be out and about, 
Um, but even then I'm still thinking about, oh my gosh, is this going to irritate my eyes, you know, at the end of the day. Um, but if you, let's be honest here. If you are going to give makeup wipes here, and I know there, there was something else that they could send our way. I know that there had to have been other variations. There had to have been like a lip product or a, a mascara or something along those lines. I mean, feel free to read me to filth, uh, y'all, in the comments. If, if you think that, you know, it's completely, like I should be totally happy with getting cleansing wipes, probably something I always use and need and all that, feel free to read me um, in the comments. But let me know if you would be upset as well if you got two cleaning pad products in your box. I mean, just let me know. So I have no problems letting loose in the next section here. Um, well, that's everything that I got. Uh, if you've stuck around so far, you ready to talk, dish some trash about the box? Let's go ahead and do it. Before we get started, I just want to say that everything I'm about to discuss is alleged and I am just giving my opinion at the end if these things do come out as being true. I know it's the talk right now because of essentially what happened with the storybook cosmetics um owner um and another subscription box that's been out and about but i've been slowly having this kind of um guttural like i enjoy the products that i get from boxy boxy charm and then i find out something more about it um, that just makes me wonder if I should cancel my subscription and, um, and it frustrates me a lot. And, and I'll tell you, I know everybody's probably already given their two cents on this, but, um, so I was first kind of starting to get a little bit suspicious when I heard about the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara that we got, um, I think it was last February. So I think it was last year to the, to the month box um we of course got it um loosely it was not in any kind of box um it was just the roll of mascara playing into the box there started to be some speculation as to whether or not we got expired ones um it didn't look the same as what people have purchased out in in stores it didn't feel the same it didn't perform the same for most people um, I will tell you, I'm not a non-waterproof uh, type mascara person, but I decided to go ahead and try it. Um, I think I had tried it in trial sizes before. That mascara made my eyes sting, and I even tried to put like a waterproof covering um, mascara over it, and it just, it never worked out for me. So I just figured it was, oh, well, it's because it's not waterproof, and but then all those things came out about it possibly being expired and I just ended up throwing it away. So flash forward <laughs> and people start noticing, I think first with the Kypris serum, which I did get and I have used and I really enjoy it. When it got to me though, it was already kind of, it wasn't, the bottle wasn't broken and the seal wasn't broken, but the serum was like oozing out the side. So it was, it kind of came to me in a gross um, state, but it worked fine. So I, I, I'm an avid watcher of the um, Not So Evil Stepmother. She does do a lot of um, investigation on makeup subscription boxes. I haven't addressed this yet, but you know, she's the main reason why I stopped doing my Yes Oh Yes uh, box after, gosh, I think I got two boxes and that was it. And I, I've even privated those, those um, videos now because of what has happened with that company. Um, but all I can say is thank God I didn't stay in there and thank God I lost my credit card very shortly after. <laughs> But, uh, so apparently folks had noticed that, um, who had the Kypris, uh, the actual Kypris stuff, 
noticed that there were some differences in the formula. And I think at that point in time, I'm not sure if there were any differences in where it was manufactured. Um, I think they also noticed some slight differences in the packaging. I'm not entirely certain. Um, maybe not. But there was differences there. And so, um, and the ingredient differences made um, people speculate as to whether or not the product was really as good as what you would buy in the store. Like if it would change the makeup of that material enough to where like maybe you're putting lower quality ingredients on your face that maybe you don't necessarily want to. Um, I can tell you after trying that, if it's as good, um, if that if that ver version is subpar, um, then oh boy, I, I, I should probably be buying the <laughs> buying the full thing or the real thing because uh, wowie zowie. Um, I, I really like the products. So there was that and I was like, hmm, that's weird. So then comes uh, December, um, which is our boxy Lux time. And um, I really like the Ciate blush, but a lot of people started noticing that one of the first ingredients in there was talc and it's supposed to be typically a talc free product. But there were a lot of people saying, oh, this isn't as good as normal Ciate blushes are. Um, it's not as pigmented. And then um, there are some people who were like, I use this blush because it's talc free. And the minute I use this particular one that we got from BoxyCharm, I broke out and that's when I found out there was talc in it. The formula was different than the other blushes that Ciate um, generally sold. And on top of that, when you looked at it closer, it said made in PRC when most of Ciate's um, products are made, I guess, somewhere else. So people would check the website and the website for Ciate said, you know, advertise these blushes as being talc free, completely talc free. And then you get the BoxyCharm version and it's not talc free. And it's like, what what's going on here? Um, and then, so when people messaged Ciate about it or brought it to their attention, suddenly the website changes so that talc free advertisement is no longer there, which is incredibly shady. Um, so there's that. that. That started to make me feel a little bit icky. Like, are these brands making subpar products and putting it in the box? Like, is it gonna be different? Like, if I try it here, is it gonna be different than the product that I actually get out in the real world? So then also the Storybook Cosmetics, the Little Briar Rose, which I'm also assuming that this happened with the other little palettes that came in the base box. Storybook, you know, touts the fact that they are made in the U.S., you know, about how great their quality is because it's made in the U.S. Apparently our Little Briar Rose palettes were made in PRC. I actually really like the formula of that. I think those eyeshadows perform beautifully. I really like them. And in fact, I like them so much that I actually bought from the Storybook Cosmetics website, which Storybook Cosmetics is a totally different subject, maybe for a totally different day. I, I've decided now that after even just making one purchase, I, I won't be supporting that company anymore because I there's a lot of stuff around them too that I don't necessarily want to get to in this video, but said made in PRC on that. Most people are like, whoa, what's up with this? Um, there were also some people who have had some Storybook Cosmetics, um, other palettes in the past and been like, this is different. This is a different formula than what I'm used to. What's going on here? There are a lot of people who didn't like the Little Briar Rose uh, palette that came out of uh, BoxyCharm that I noticed when I, I was watching the videos on online um, or on YouTube um, that said it was a little too powdery for them. Like it just didn't seem like other stuff that they had tried. Then I guess it came out, I don't know, within the last week. So apparently it came out that Storybook had, or at least one of the owners of Storybook, one of the triplets had contracted or whatever to uh, with another subscription box to uh, do 
you know, I don't know if it was like a brand takeover or if it was just like they were going to uh, provide product for that box and basically took the money from the box so that they could deliver these pallets, which I, you know, I, I guess I am going to get into this. Apparently, this is kind of a uh, running theme with Storybook where, you know, people will subscribe to things like pallets and they'll wait and wait and wait and wait and never get their orders fulfilled. Like there was some sort of pallet subscription thing or a subscription box that, you know, they had all these special edition things that you would get and, and people would pay for it and not see anything for like seven months. Like they took their money, but then weren't providing them the product and it's more along the lines of, oh, we had production issues or, you know, we'll get it to you. You'll get it, you know, as soon as we can do fulfill it. And we're a small company and we don't have the same resources as all the other big companies, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you can't fill your stuff, maybe you shouldn't be in business. But I digress. So Storybooks had no, Cosmetics had no problem taking this lady's money to do the manufacturing, to provide palette or products or whatever. And uh, it came close to time um, to start wanting to release spoilers or something. And it was getting closer and closer to the time in which, you know, the box should have come out. And the owner of the subscription box contacted them and said, hey, where, where's your stuff? We paid you for this. Where's your stuff? Um, you know, my subscribers are expecting spoilers. Uh, they're expecting, you know, to find out a little bit more of, what, you know, what's coming their way. So do you have everything? And I guess the lady basically, you know, kind of kept putting her off, putting her off, and then finally come to find out that they don't have the pallets ready. It's not going to be ready for a while. And the lady's like, well, what gives? You guys were able to do this for BoxyCharm, I think. I should probably be getting my facts straight, but there are plenty of videos out there that you can see that forms the back end of this. But basically, the lady from Storybook Cosmetics, you know, had had essentially said you're not paying us enough it costs us way too much to get these together we for the amount of quantity the quantity that you're asking for it takes a really long time for us to do this we can't fulfill it by this date sorry um if you want we'll give you back the refund and then the lady's like well this really screws me because now i have like i do my planning months and months and months ahead of time for this box and I've literally got nothing to go out to my subscribers now because you've put me off and put me off. I don't know who I can line up to make this box um, worth it to folks. And you know, this, I can't, I can't do that to my, to my people. What's going on? How come you were able to deal with BoxyCharm? And then it comes out that basically BoxyCharm, <laughs> Um, when they're working with these brands, these brands, it's essentially like advertisement for the brands. And so they are supposed to provide their products at cost um, to the company. And, and the company will be like, okay, well, what's your base cost for this? And if it's too high, uh, apparently what BoxyCharm will do is like, okay, you know what? Just bill us for the packaging and give us the packaging and we have our own facility in China that will manufacture it and we will get a whole bunch of product put out and brought over, but it will all be in your packaging. And uh, apparently this is how they got out the storybooks Little Briar Rose palette to all of us and all those other palettes. Not only did this lady, did the storybook cosmetics uh, owner breach her contract, of confidentiality but they also really screwed over this other lady and one thing you don't want to do is give somebody that you screwed over information to basically crush you and your business online now everything makes sense uh to us uh now it makes sense why the batch codes for the two-faced better than sex mascara didn't match up 
or made it look like uh, the product was from 2012 or now it makes sense why the containers look different now it makes sense why they didn't have a box that it came in because normally those come in little boxes On one hand i'm upset because like if you're giving me a subpar product i guess i'm never going to use that brand again like i don't understand why brands would want to do that because if it's a crappy product because you allowed the company the box to produce this i'm sorry i got eye fleck weirdness going on i got something going on with my eye and my eyes are offended by things so don't be surprised if stuff starts running down my face here it's one of the reasons why it's annoying that i can't keep a single eye look on but leave a blinky eye emoji or something in the comments if this happens to you um Anyway, um, so like I might associate a mediocrity and subparness or just bad makeup experience in general with your brand and never want to purchase from your brand ever again if you do that a lot. Uh, secondly, um, like the, the people who um, use the Ciate London br uh, blush discovered or even some of these other brands discovered if you're allergic to talc and you think oh I've had this brand before I know that they don't use talc in their products it's going to be okay for me to go brush on this all in my face and you have an allergic reaction to that that's a major issue or even like a skincare pro um, product you know that's a major issue um, there's also you know there is some, I mean, since they're selling it in the U.S., I don't know if there's a little bit more um, regulations or hoops that they have to jump through. I don't think there's as much regulation with cosmetics um, here, but I mean, still, you need to make sure that they're safe. You're not giving people poison to put on their faces. But I mean, still, like with skincare, I don't necessarily want to buy skincare from China, okay? Um, where I know things that are going to go, well, I guess I could say the same for makeup though. Um, I know that some of their quality controls just aren't as good. You're giving me a product that I think might be okay. And then it's like, oh, it breaks me out or, oh, it's subpar or whatever. The other thing could also be true. Um, it could go the other way. Like what if the product that BoxyCharm has put together is actually better than the product I would buy, then that's even more false advertising because it's like, for me, I really like the Little Briar Rose palette, okay? I love the way it performed and I loved it so much. I was like, well, maybe I ought to go get some more um, of these uh, Storybook Cosmetics. They have cute packaging. It might be fun to decorate, you know, my area with that. Plus I have this really nice makeup product that I can use and, um, it could also be a difference in the colors. I did pick one that was a little bit brighter colors and that sort of thing. But I don't think the performance of those shadows are as good as the one that I got in the BoxyCharm. So, you know, the other thing could happen is that the BoxyCharm actually ends up like through doing the reformulation or using, you know, maybe materials, more materials like talc that make it a little bit easier to blend something or pigment or whatever. They end up actually creating a product that I like better, but then I go out in the real world thinking that I'm going to buy the same thing that I got through Poxy Charm, and I get the product and I'm like, what's up? I paid full price for this and this is terrible. I, I thought for certain this would be good. Um, so there's that problem. Um, also, if BoxyCharm is, is using products that I can use on my face that might be a little bit more subpar like talc, um, but I know when you get out into the high-end um, cosmetics area realm um, and people like to, you know, advertise that they're vegan, cruelty-free, and then talc-free or some of these other ingredients free, um, a lot of times with those vegan formulas, they I've, I've found where uh, examples where people might use cornstarch instead of like talc or mica or whatever, but they need something kind of powdery to, to get that powder to, you know, flow evenly on your face. I'm allergic to corn. Um, I got a blush through Ipsy one time that I didn't realize had cornstarch as the first ingredient. 
in it and I went putting it all over my face and I started breaking out in this horrible rash itching all day and um, I found out it's because they use cornstarch and so what if that also happened like maybe the boxy charm version doesn't have a particular allergen in it and since I'm not aware that it's <laughs> Um, it's not the same as what you would go buy at a cosmetic store or counter or whatever, or even online directly from the brand. I go and buy that and it's using totally different ingredients that I think is okay. And then I go put it all over my face and uh, suddenly the thing that I, you know, bought that should have been exactly the same is breaking me out in a rash. I mean, that's, that's irritating. I guess I always knew that there was going to be a price to paying so low for a box and to get such high-end products but if this is just a boxy charm product with say becca's name on it and it's in the back of packaging but it's not really the formula that i would buy like why bother or at least disclose that to me so i can still make that decision myself as to whether or not i'm okay um, with paying for things that are just in name only and I just I don't know how to feel about it and at the same time recently I've been feeling like you know I have too many products I should also be saving more money you know it costs a lot to keep you know uh, buying these subscription boxes and keeping them up every month and maybe it would be easier if I just kept that money to myself and then spent it on an item that I really liked even though it would cost a lot of money to just get one item I would still be picking out something that's a lot more in line of what I truly want as opposed to just being handed a bunch of stuff that wasn't necessarily selected by me it's just what they had um <sighs> And I've been going back and forth. So I'm still at that point where it's like, I don't know, should I cancel my boxy charm? But at the same time, I really like opening up products. I, For me, it was always like, well, it's great that even if it's not the best, I'm at least trying new brands and then I can find out what I like. Well, if you're not giving me the real brand product, how can I even justify that that's what I'm doing? I just... I. I don't know what to do here. I'm, I'm a little bit lost. Um, I don't know what to do. Um, I did, after seeing the the Fenty brand takeover of the premium box, decided to go ahead and try and sign up for premium. I'm currently on the wait list. I think everybody else and their brother tried to do that. Everybody else and their sister. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, you know, gender fluidity. Everybody else and their... Uh, non-gender specific sibling how about that we'll go with that um wanted to be wanted that box too so i'm sure um it wouldn't surprise me if i'm still on the wait list next month but apparently everybody's supposed to get a kilowatt uh highlighter and the trophy wife which is of course the famous one and a gloss bomb and I'm just wondering, are we truly going to be getting the Trophy White Wife uh, highlighter? Like, are we really going to get that and be trying out the true one? Or is it something that BoxyCharm has manufactured and put in Fenty packaging? You know what I mean? Um, I've wanted to try these things because you know you hear all the hype and everything. But I am curious what you all think about it. And then I get this month's box, which is, you know, half cleaning products and um, a setting powder I probably won't use. Um, and I'll probably use it. I, I need to get off of that now. But um, it's certainly not as bad as the August 2018 box with the Laura Lee. Oh my God, that palette was terrible. That box was terrible. Like ho horrible dried up products in there. Now, what do you all think? How do you all feel? Do you plan on keeping your boxy charm if you subscribe currently? I, I mean, I just, I don't know. I feel lost to think about it after that tirade. I'm sure you really want to stick around, but uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. 
And as always, have a great day, evening, weekend, whenever you're watching this. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.